Hi, this is Ryan with AlarmSystemStore.com here to tell you about how to hook up and program your DSC alarm system. I'm going to walk through the basic steps of opening up the package, mounting your hardware, what wires to put where, and then uh, in the next video we will actually program the alarm system. So let's go to my desk and uh, let's hook up an alarm system. Okay. Now we're at my setup table and I've got my DSC kit. I've got a motion sensor, I've got a door contact, and what I am going to do is open up the kit which contains my keypad, uh, another motion sensor, and a few other items. And we're going to basically now wire the system up. Okay, now I've taken everything out of the box and when you open up your kit you go, you've got a door, excuse my arm there, and you're going to pull out your different items. You've got the RJ31 jack that we don't really use a whole lot unless you're really interested in the line seizure. you got your keypad, you've got an indoor siren, wireless key fob, paperwork, and then you've got your board. Um, Rather, you're using a 1616, 1832, or 1864, your board and the required components will be right inside this container right here. You open it up, you want to take out your board, remove the paperwork from inside the uh, cabinet. Okay, your green circuit board goes right inside the green cabinet, just like so. You'll also receive a little bag that will have battery, your battery things, resistors. Okay, now you've got everything taken out of the box. I've got my green circuit board mounted, and uh, what we got to do now is wire everything up. Um, I don't know if it's an OCD thing or whatnot, but what I always do is uh, when I got everything out of the package, I take the pieces uh, this here connects to your backup battery um, it may look like this or it may just have two pieces um, depending on what system you have um, I just go ahead and connect this next to the key bus and I'll just tuck it back in the back and I'm done with it done so that way I don't have to worry about the, that backup battery wire just hanging around somewhere Next um, is you need to connect your AC wire. Make sure no, nothing is plugged in. Do not plug your transformer in or anything like that. Um, you need two wires right there. And this is coming, this is already ran. And it's inside your panel. All right. You put the two wires into the terminals that is marked AC, AC. And we'll do that like so. And then we'll tighten down the, the screws. It's non-polarity, so don't worry. And this is the same for the 1616, the 1832, or 1864. It's non-polarity. Just make sure it's not plugged in so that way you're not blowing transformers, you're not blowing the key bus, or any keypads or anything like that. So that wire is ran. The next wire that is ran is going to be for the keypad. All right, so I'll take my keypad wire. It's now inside the box, and the keypads will go into the terminals, as I indicated, red, black, yellow, green. So we're going to make sure our wires are in somewhat of an order to go into those red, black, yellow, and green. Pretty simple. Um, on the back of the keypad, you will see here in a few that it's also labeled red, black, yellow, green. So it's kind of hard to mess up. And you just put them into the terminals that match the color code and tighten it up. If you got multiple keypads, you can put multiple wires underneath these terminals. So it's okay to have two or three, four wires. So we've got our power. 
which is an AC and AC, our keypads, which are in red, black, yellow, green. I've got a wire that is also ran, and it is ran for a front door, which is going to be our zone number one. Um, it is a 22 gauge four conductor wire that was ran. However, front doors uh, only need two wires. So what we will actually do is fold back the red and the black and not use those. Um, I use 22-4 just for the simple fact it gets me by with about everything I need to wire and uh, I don't have to buy different gauges of wire. The zones, zone one is Z1 and COM. Zone two would be Z2 and COM. Zone three would be Z3 and COM. One wire in each terminal. So since my front door is zone one, I am going to put it under Z1 and COM. It's non-polarity, so I'll just stick it in, tighten it up. And I will show you the other end of these wires uh, after I go through this basic part right here. So now we've got zone one wired. Um, my zone two is going to be a motion detector. Um, a motion detector require, does require four wires. So I've got my four wires. Um, a motion detector requires power. So the red and black will need to go to the aux plus and aux minus. So let's go ahead and do the aux plus and aux minus. Red goes to aux plus, black to aux minus, you tighten those down, they're in there. And then the zone is going to be zone 2, so it's going to go to a COM and Z2. And in this case, on this panel, zone 2 shares a COM with zone 1, so both your zone 1 and zone 2 COM wires will be in the same terminal. That is okay. COM is just almost like a negative. And then I'll put the other wire in the zone 2. Me, I don't know if it's an OCD thing or not. I like to keep my wires consistent. Um, so usually the zone terminals I use green and all the COMs I use yellow. Although it's non-polarity, it, it doesn't matter to me. I, I try to, you know, somewhat try to keep things neat. So now I've got the wires ran for a front door and a motion. Um, you would continue on back doors, windows, etc. the same way, zone and a comm, and go from there. Now on the other end is the power stuff. Here's the other end of my AC wire. I've got a couple clips on there which makes it a lot easier. And I've got my power transformer. 1640 some of them look different. Some only have the two prongs. Some have the ground prong. In this case, I use the ground prong. Um, you would just use AC and AC. You don't have to worry about the ground unless you're grounding it out. So we will use the AC and AC terminals. And as indicated before, it's non-polarity, so it doesn't matter which wire goes where. I will not plug that in yet. Um, we had a zone one which was a front door. So now if we go to our front door and the wires, and I've got everything here on the short wire for video purposes only. I've got my two zone wires, my green and the yellow. This is a standard mini surface mount door contact. You got two screws and a magnet. Um, this terminal here, your wire basically goes into these two terminals and then you tighten them down with a screw. Um, I'm not sure if they're out already or not, so I'm going to screw them out just a tad. Non-polarity, so it doesn't matter which one goes in which hole. And 
they're in and then you just tighten them down I will say it's a lot easier when they are mounted on the wall to work with rather than in your hand and that's all it takes to wire up a front door so I will set that there next is the motion detector you open up the motion get it out of the box all right unscrew You gotta take the screw all the way out. Get the screw out, you open it up, a lot of cool looking things inside. If you look real close, you got more terminals, and uh, there's even some labels on those. You'll see it's all though it's upside down. Uh, 12V, 12 minus, obviously that's going to be your power. Um, also on a motion detector you will use NC, which is normally closed, and your common. Um, those would be for your, for your zones. So I've got my motion wires ran. And uh, what I'm going to do is wire it up. make sure these positive and negatives are open for my wires as well as my NC and C sorry if I was blinding you guys now I'm not going to punch holes into this motion in the back of it because um, this is just for video um, but like I said I'm going to go ahead and wire this up and be back with you guys in a second. Um, your 12 volt positive, get the what, red wire. Your 12 volt negative will get the black wire. And then your NC in common will use the green and the yellow. It doesn't matter which one goes where. Okay, the motion is now wired. I got my powers in and I got my normally closed and common wire. And uh, that's that. Now the next part is going to be the keypad. Keypad, whether you're using a LED or a LCD, um, will usually be wired about the same way. Um, 
you just open up the keypad. You got the green boards and you got your terminals right up here. And if you can look and see, you got R for red, B for black, yellow is Y, and green is G. Um, some keypads you can wire a hardwired zone to the keypad. It takes a little bit additional programming, but you can wire a zone into this keypad um, and make it a your keypad a hardwired zone um, for some devices. My keypad wire has been ran. Um, now we'll bring the wire in between the back slot. And what I will actually do is then place the wires, red, black, yellow, green, um, into the proper slots as they are labeled on the keypad. I use my wires here for different keypads for different systems and uh, that is why they're so out of whack. For some reason, I always try to put them in at the same time. Red, black, yellow, green. Red, black, yellow, green. Red, black, yellow, green, red, black, yellow, green. And then you just put the keypad back in place. For demonstration purposes, I am not going to hook the siren up to this. Um, sirens will go into the bell plus, bell minus, depending on the type of siren you use. Um, some sirens do have multiple wires. Um, you will use a, a negative, and then you will only use one of the uh, positive wires. Uh, some have red and yellow and white. Um, most common white is negative. Your red and yellow would indicate a, a steady sound or a yelp sound. Um, you just choose one of the wires. Do not use both. Um, so now the system's wired, my keypad's wired, my front door's wired, my motion detector's wired, um, both at the panel and at the devices themselves. The next part is to power up the system. So we're going to go ahead and power up the system. Okay, and now we are powering up the system. And the next thing to do is to program it. And that will be the next video.